Good day. Before we proceed be sure to watch this video attentively and hear what is expected of you after the lesson. 1. Identify and interpret different kinds of technical drawings. 2. Prepare. Make changes to electrical or electronic schematics and drawings. 3. Store technical drawings and equipment or instruments. Before we dive into the main topic, let's know first the difference between a drawing and a diagram. Let's have an example. Let's say a human heart. Now we would like to put it into drawing and into a diagram. This is the drawing and this is its diagram. Drawing is a more general term than diagram, so you could say a diagram is a type of drawing. Generally speaking, a diagram is intended to convey technical information in a clear, visual format. Drawing is a much broader field and can include all kinds of visual mark-making practices. The difference between diagram and drawing is that the diagram is a plan, drawing, sketch, or outline to show how something works or the relationships between the parts of a whole. A diagram in an electronics and electrical circuit is very useful. It served as the reference to design and troubleshoot electrical components. The most commonly used electronic diagrams are block diagram, pictorial diagram, schematic diagram, and wiring diagram. Each diagram has a unique characteristic. Here are the examples of diagrams that we can use in electronics. Let's start with the block diagram. In electrical and electronics, a block diagram is usually used for presenting internal components of an integrated circuit. This diagram used shapes like squares, rectangles, or triangles to represent components or units of equivalent and arrows to connect components represent the direction of signal flow through the system. Let's have an example. Here we have an example of a block diagram of an analog transmitter. This squares represents the components and this arrows represents the flow of signal through the system. Based on this diagram, we can say that the signal starts here and ends here and by means of its path we can say that in making a diagram, it should start on the left, which is the input, and ends to the right, which is the output. Next we have the pictorial diagram. The pictorial diagram uses pictures to represent the different components of a particular system. It can vary in level of detail. Some diagrams may have realistic pictures to make the various components easier to identify. Here is an example of a pictorial diagram of simple circuit. You can clearly see the connections in the circuit and it uses pictures of the components as seen in real life. If you want to see the flow of current on this circuit, we can use a schematic diagram. Another type of diagram is a schematic diagram. Schematic diagram shows the different graphic symbols in a simple way. It is a combination of lines and electrical symbols that illustrate the connection of components or devices. Using a schematic diagram does not depict or display the physical aspect of a device or object and it follows a standard form. There are 100 plus schematic symbols that we can use. They fall under 15 categories, which are wires, switches, sources, ground, resistor, variable resistor, capacitor, inductors, diodes, transistor, logic gates, amplifiers, antenna, transformer, and miscellaneous. But only 50 of them are the most commonly used symbols. Sometimes there are confusions in reading a schematic diagram because there are two designs of symbols, which are International Variant and United States Variant. Have a look at this example. This is the International Variant symbol of a resistor, and this is the United States Variant symbol. We also have this, the International Variant symbol of a capacitor, and this is the United States Variant symbol. And lastly, the wiring diagram. A wiring diagram is a simplified conventional pictorial representation of an electrical circuit. It shows the components of the circuit as simplified shapes and the power and signal connections between the devices. As you can see in this examples, all these lines represents a wire and how components interconnect. And those are the different diagrams that we can use in electronics. Now let us discuss the rules for drawing the schematic symbols. 
This is important to avoid confusion to the one who will read or interpret the diagram. These are recommended practices to be followed in the application of symbols to a circuit. 1. Any position of the symbol on a diagram does not change its meaning. 2. The darker the drawing of lines does not affect the meaning of a symbol. The heavier lines are used to emphasize the symbol. 3. In a diagram, the size of the symbol does not affect its meaning, however, the size of the symbol should be proportional to the rest of the symbols. 4. Some of the symbols are drawn larger than the other. For simplicity, it is recommended to use not more than two different sizes of symbols on a diagram. Reference designation is also important in making a diagram. Each symbol used on a diagram has its corresponded or designated letter to represent electrical and electronic components or devices. They're also a combination of letters and number that we can use as a reference. The letter stands for the component and the number beside it represents the number of that component present on that certain circuit. It can also be used to avoid confusion if there is a computation of its value whenever needed. From this diagram, we can say that there are four resistors with different values as reference. Another thing to consider is the layout. Layout should be precisely drawn so that it can easily understand. The parts of the diagram such as the lines and spaces should be carefully balanced to avoid crowding. Line thickness is also needed to consider. Schematic diagram is using lines or the weight of lines to connect different symbols. There are line thickness for specific line application. For general use, mechanical connections, shielding and features, bracket connecting dash line, we can apply medium thickness of line. Boundary of mechanical grouping, bracket and leader lines uses thin lines. And for emphasis we will use thick lines. Before we start drawing or making a diagram, let's get to know first what are the instruments that we would be using. Drawing pencil is an instrument that is used basically for writing and drawing. It is made up of graphite lead, wood, and sometimes with an eraser in it. There are two types of drawing pencil that we can use. One is B pencils. Two is H pencils. B pencils contain darker lines. However, they are easily erasable without any effort being put in. While H pencils are generally very hard, and they are able to hold a tip in place, ensuring extreme precision. They also make light lines that can be erased with great ease and convenience so one can easily use these pencils to design products or write things on paper. Eraser is an instrument that is used to erase unnecessary marks, correct wrong drawings, and make your drawing clean and neat. There are five types of eraser to choose from. Rubber erasers, gum eraser, kneaded eraser, vinyl erasers, and pencil erasers. Rubber erasers are the pink erasers found on the end of every number 2 pencil. This eraser removes graphite pencil on paper by shedding itself as it lifts the pencil marks. If using over aggressively, these could tear your paper but with normal use, this does not happen. Gum erasers also called art gum erasers have a completely different feel than that of a pink pearl. While these are also made out of rubber, they are much softer than what we consider typical rubber erasers. When used, gum erasers tend to crumble but don't worry, this is supposed to happen. The crumbs actually help absorb the graphite. The nice thing about gum erasers is that since they crumble when erasing, they do not tear up your paper. However, they also tend to not last as long as other erasers. Kneaded erasers work by lifting pigment such as graphite and charcoal off the surface. Because of this, paper is left undamaged with no smears. Vinyl erasers, also called plastic erasers, and also the toughest erasers on this list. If not used carefully, they can easily tear through paper. These erasers are definitely handy as they can erase almost anything, even ink. Vinyl erasers are preferred by draftsmen because of their clean and complete erasing. Pencil erasers, or erasals, are made out of vinyl, as mentioned above, and come in pencil form. They can be sharpened to a point with a regular pencil sharpener the same as you would an ordinary pencil, making them ideal for small details, such as highlights in hair. It's always a good idea to wipe the tip of the eraser while working so you don't smear graphite back in your work. Protractor is semicircular plastic instrument with prints of measures from 0 to 180 degrees. 
This is used to measure angles. It is capable of making and measuring 0 to 360 degrees. Here is a short clip. Draw the angle KLM with a measure of 41 degree. Use the straight edge of the protractor to draw a line. Mark the points with L and M on it. Place the center point of the protractor on L. Align L to M to straighten. Hold the protractor firmly. Count from 0 to 41 degrees. Mark it as point K. Use the straight edge of the protractor and align point L to point K. And this is a simple simulation on how to draw an angle using a protractor. Compass is used to draw arcs and circles. It has two legs. One leg has a pointed needle which is usually put at the center of the paper or canvas. And the other leg, where in the pencil is located, allows you to draw circles or marks. Here is a short clip on how to use a compass. Locate the needle of the compass in an intersecting line. Tilt the compass slightly away from you and drag the pencil while turning the compass. Do not press on the pencil and let the weight of the pencil draw the circle. Set squares are two triangular patterns made of plastic that are used to make accurate angles and parallel or perpendicular lines. A pair of set squares is 30 degrees, 60 degrees and 45 degrees. These patterns are made to draw lines at 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. Drawing board is traditionally made of wood or timber that has a metal frame to form a desk for making drawings or designs. It has two sizes, the A3 and A4. T-square is made of wood or plastic. It has two parts namely the stalk and the blade. The blade of T-square is made to draw vertical and inclined lines at 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Drafting machine is used to combine the function of T-square, protractor, and set squares. It can be attached to a drawing board or a drawing table. Its arms are movable to easily access all its functions. Drawing pins and clips are used to fix drawing sheet or drawing paper onto the drawing table. Electronic template is mostly made of flexible plastic that has different symbols and designs that can be traced by using a drawing pencil. After we have created or drawn our diagrams it is very important or essential to properly store and maintain the good condition of a tool. Maintenance of a tool should be scheduled to check if the tool is safe to use and if it is in good condition. We can now apply the 5S method. 5S are steps involve going through everything in a space, deciding what's necessary and what isn't, putting things in order, cleaning, and setting up procedures for performing these tasks on a regular basis. 5S stands for Siri or sorting, Cyton or set in order, Siso or shine, Seiketsu or standardize, and Shitsuke or sustain, Siri or sorting or putting things in order. Discard what is not needed so that there are fewer hazards and less clutter to interfere with work. Keep only what is needed. In using tools or drawing instrument, identify first what are the things needed in a certain task. With sorting, we can prevent cluttering of our drawing tools that might scatter around our workplace. Cyton or orderliness are proper arrangement. Place things in such a way that they can be easily reached whenever they are needed. The tools are arranged properly so that tools can be easily located. Put tools or drawing instruments near the workplace so that they can easily be reached and used. The best practice for this is, to place the tools or instruments that are commonly used near you. See so or clean or cleanliness. Keep, materials, tools, and instruments free from dirt always. After using all the tools or drawing instruments, make sure, that it is clean or free from dirt before storing it. Don't forget to clean the workplace. Seiketsu or standardize or purity means maintain cleanliness after cleaning. Maintaining standard, maintain cleanliness of the tools and workplace after used every time. Shitsuke or sustaining commitment. Maintain standards and keep the workplace in safe and efficient order day after day or even year after year. Sustaining the standard of cleaning the tools and workplace. It helps reduce the accident in the workplace and make the tools in good condition. 
As we have discussed on the previous topic please do this on a day-to-day -day basis. Not just because we want to, but because we need to. And here ends our discussion today. If you have questions regarding this topic, please do comment on the comment sections. I would be glad to entertain your questions. With regards to my students, please do give your questions on our designated GCs.